it's David Horn here, and I'm going to talk to you about how small businesses can think like big businesses and achieve exponential growth. Something that's set out in my book, um, but I'll pull out some bits and pieces from that and, and really bring it to life. And I'd like to share with you the story of a business that I worked with from 2003 until 2006. Um, I joined the company just after it had made its first acquisition. It was a business listed on AIM, the alternative investment market of the London Stock Exchange. And when I joined, we had about 1.1 million pounds in turnover and something like 35 people in the company. <clears throat> Over the next three years, we raised 60 million pounds in debt and equity funding. We bought six other companies and took over another company that was listed on the stock exchange. Uh, so seven acquisitions in total um, and put all of those businesses together to create an organization that was operating in the UK, Belgium and France. Um, and we grew revenue in those three years, 25 X from 1.1 million pounds to 27.7 million pounds. Uh, we also grew profits by 11 fold from around 400 grand to uh, a little over 4 million. Uh, and we grew to a team of nearly 400 people. Um, and you can't do that with old fashioned thinking. You can't do that with organic growth thinking unless you're very, very lucky and happen to be in a very hot sector at the right time. So how did we do that? Well, we raised money and we bought other companies and put them together. The whole experience was was fascinating. It's um, it's something that I had learned previously uh, in in a, a role that I'd had uh, prior to joining this group, where I had been the European CFO of a very acquisitive PR agency group, headquartered out of New York, and um, we had a brief to build an agency network in Europe by acquisition, and we had New York's checkbook, so that was quite fun. And we um, negotiated seven acquisitions during a period of. Uh, just two years um, and we're growing rapidly when our parent company ended up being gobbled up by Interpublic Group and merged into um, IPG's PR brand. So after a short handover period, I left that business and was introduced um, to the man who was the founder of an AIM-listed company called Huvo PLC, a man named John Van Cuffler. And it's really that story that I want to share with you, not so much the details of the story, but kind of the principles and the philosophies and what you can do in your business to adapt those kind of ideas and, and, and learn more. And if you want to find out more, um, please check out my book. Um, it's available on Amazon. There will also be something at the end of this uh, show where there's links that you can get my book. Um, and I'm very happy to sign that and send it out to you. Um, so let's just talk briefly about kind of the philosophy, the idea. I've developed a methodology uh, that I call FACE, which stands for Fund, Acquire, Consolidate, and Exit. So it's basically raise some money um, and then buy things, put them together, and then when you've created something that's got a significantly greater value, then you can sell it, exit, and then do whatever you want. You can do fund acquire, consolidate, exit, and then repeat and do it again and do it again and do it again. Or you can go off after your exit and do other things with your life. Um, but this is really designed as, a, as a, a vehicle that enables entrepreneurs and owners of SME businesses to scale up and create some greater value in, in their own organization and to, and to see the, the pathway to to a greater degree of financial freedom um, and hopefully to a, a, a way of giving back. Um, because, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to grow your business up and sell it for, for gazillions, um, it would be nice to know that you're going to do more than just sit on a beach and, uh, and uh, watch the sun go up and down every day. Uh, but, but hopefully you'll look to, you know, support one of the UN sustainable development goals and, and give back to society because, you know, I think it's great that when, when we've achieved success, we also give back. So coming back to the philosophy, and I'll just touch on each of these areas briefly. So fund, funding is all about raising external capital, whether that's debt or equity funding, the routes you go down, there isn't really time to go through all of them in detail. 
um, but you know your 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 debt funding might be from a bank. It might be if you're watching this during coronavirus times and you want to get aggressive, you might use your CBILS loan, coronavirus business interruption loan, to actually go out and use some of that money to buy another company, um, or use it to invest in in what you're doing to grow and build your business. Um, and if we're beyond that time and you're watching this, then you know it's it's still an opportunity for you to go out and either raise debt funding. Um, or raise equity funding and it's it's important to understand the difference between the two so with debt funding you have to pay that money back whereas with equity funding you're not paying the money back but you're selling a stake in the company that you own and so you need to get your head around that so it might be that an investor is going to put a chunk of money into the business that you founded and all of a sudden they're going to own 25% of it and you'll own 75%. So there's a, a change in dynamic required. Um, but the great thing about equity funding is it's not money that you have to pay back per se, like a loan. It's money that the investor is putting into the business to help drive the business forward with a view to seeing an exit at some point in the future, which will give them a greater return. So that's what they're looking at. So there are so many different routes to funding. You can look at crowdfunding for both debt and equity. Uh, depending on the size of your business, you can look at uh, friends and family round if you're just starting out or if you only need maybe up to say 50 grand. Um, the easiest way to do that is through friends and family. Um, if you're going into larger amounts of capital, the next stage will be to look at angel investors, which is typically successful entrepreneurs who've grown and sold a business themselves and are now looking to help others. And that's part of their kind of giving back by, by sharing their knowledge and expertise and experience. And so that might be a, a route to go down, depending again on how much money you need. And typically angels, you're looking at anywhere from 50 to 250,000 pounds coming into a business. If you need more than that, then the next route is to go down and look at venture capital. And typically venture capital kicks in at around, yeah, 500,000. Some will go down to 250, um, but mostly they kick in at around 500,000 and go up to a few million. Um, beyond that, there's private equity and beyond that, there's public markets. But again, we can, we can address that separately in a Q&A and, and it's set out in much, much more detail in my book. Um, so you can, if you're, if you're wanting to know more, then you can learn there. Uh, the next thing, so that's a, that's, sorry, that's fund. And the next thing is then acquire. Um, so this is where you're going out and buying another company. And I think the first thing I'll say is that I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. And one of my favorite Warren Buffett phrases is that it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So in other words, don't just look for something that's cheap and gonna be problematic. Look for something that's really good. And as Warren does, you know, wait, watch, uh, take your time, identify the things that you want, and then when the time is right, make an offer at a price that you feel is appropriate. And again, just picking up on the COVID-19 time, you know, now could be a really good time to be looking at buying companies because there's a great deal of uncertainty in the market. And, and a lot of people are looking at businesses that, that could really struggle and possibly even go under. And it's not really because anything's gone wrong other than the fact that with lockdown, the economy got shut down. So, you know, if you're a, a, a hospitality type business that's maybe only just been allowed to open or something like that. If you're a leisure center you're, or a gym, you're still not allowed to open. So, you know, the business was fundamentally okay, but all of a sudden it just bang, it stopped. And some businesses will survive and some businesses won't survive. And so, you know, if you're potentially looking at doing an acquisition in a, a post COVID world um, and you're looking at picking up a, a, a business that hasn't survived, look at it very carefully to make sure that it was otherwise pre-COVID a decent business that just happened to fall into difficult times in an unlucky situation. If it was a business that wasn't fundamentally strong, then I wouldn't touch it because it's the same issue. Um, but I would always look for businesses that fit that Warren Buffett criteria. Look for a wonderful business. Uh, something that really makes strategic sense, you know, and it, it depends what you do. You can look at different angles when you're looking at acquisitions. You can 
you can buy out a competitor. So let's say for argument's sake that you are, um, that you are running a building, um, a building services company. So you do facilities management. And it might be interesting for you to then buy out um, one of your other facilities management competitors, expand the scale of what your offering is, or you might decide to move into related industry verticals. So you've got your facilities management business, and now you wanna buy an HVAC company, or you wanna buy a fire and security company, or you wanna buy a manned guarding company, or you wanna provide a company that but, sorry, buy a company that provides visitor management systems. Any of those different ranges of things where effectively your target customers are the same people across that range, with, all within that building management sector. And that's just one example of something that you could look at doing. So you could buy out a competitor. Uh, you could buy out an upstream supplier. You could buy out a downstream customer or you could buy uh, an industry vertical that will expand the size and scale of what you're doing in your business. So those are all different ideas that you can look at for acquisitions. Um, there isn't time to get into the detail of acquisitions. Um, it's a very complex area. Again, happy to have separate conversations, but in a, in a short uh, TV show like this, there really isn't time to, to get into the full detail beyond that. The next step is consolidation, which is all about putting these different businesses together in whatever form that you choose. And there are so many different ways you can look at that. I know some entrepreneurs who simply build up a portfolio of businesses. Each one of those businesses has their own team, their own managing director, their own sales and marketing function, their own operations, their own finance, and they operate as self-contained units that don't really do much together. I'm also aware of other business groups where they centralize a lot of functions, perhaps not all of them. I think things like the operational delivery of what a business is doing can't really be centralized, but certainly things like finance, IT, uh, human resources, those kind of compliance and, and statutory requirements that are across all businesses, you can certainly look at potentially centralizing those things like cash flow management, treasury management, et cetera, but then leave the day-to-day -day operational. So perhaps the sales and marketing and certainly the, the operations delivery of whatever it is that the business does leave those in those teams. And, you know, you can look at, at different routes of, of implementing that. You can, you can test it in some where perhaps you bought one company and, and the, the management team has left and you're a little bit exposed. So you want to, maybe bring that one closer into the fold, whereas you've got another business and perhaps there's a strong management team after the owners have left, they, they created a, a decent management team and you wanna let them have the opportunity to build up the company. So you can chop and change and adapt like that. But I think the key thing is really to look at it from the perspective of how can I create the greatest value in this business and as a business owner, look at it from what is your strength and what is the strength of your team? And I'll come on to the team in a minute. My last step, so the consolidation is all about putting it together. My last uh, step in the model is E, which is for exit. And that's when you decide that it's time for one or more of the investors to, share, uh, to, to sell and move on. And it might well be, you know, that you're having so much fun, you don't want to exit, but perhaps you've grown to a level now where your investor who helped you get there is saying, actually, I'd be happy to cash out now. And maybe you can do a deal where you buy back their shares and then you get all of the future benefit. Or it might be that you decide, right, I've had enough, um, I'm gonna retire, or I'm, I've had enough of this industry, but I wanna go off and launch in a new industry X, Y, Z, or I wanna go and launch a brand new company that's in my industry, but does something different whatever the, 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 the options for you to look at are, are, are virtually endless, or you might go off and become an angel investor or go off and do this all over again. Fund, acquire, consolidate, exit, repeat. So that's the model and that's kind of the mindset that you need to get into if you're wanting to think like a big business because the whole point of what I've created here is taking what I've learned working for large companies. And I worked in my early career, I worked for some 
some very large blue chip companies. I mean, I trained as a chartered accountant with PwC. I spent eight years with AT&T, the US telecoms giant. Um, I spent three years with the BBC, and then I moved gradually into smaller, more entrepreneurial businesses. But I've taken what I've learned from all of those different companies and, and just kind of distilled it down into a core set of, of operating principles and a core set of, of things to do and a methodology to follow, and that's the FACE methodology. I just want to touch briefly on one other thing that's really, really important. If you're an entrepreneur seeking to use this to, to really scale up your company, and literally, you can grow your company 25x in three years. I've done it. It's possible. <clears throat> um, but you need a team. You need a team of people. And you need, there's, there's actually, there's, there's four key assets that you need to have on board before you're going to embark on this strategy. Number one is you need a team of people. So if you're the founder, then the, the kind of the flag bearer and the leader of your organization, that's great. But you need someone who's skilled and experienced running your day-to-day -day operations, delivering whatever it is that you guys do to your customers or clients. You need people running your sales and marketing team that are bringing that new business in, that are bringing those new leads in, that are closing those leads, and then handing that over to the operations team to deliver. You need a finance team that are going to be managing all of the money issues. So whether that's collecting money from customers, paying money to suppliers, paying your staff, paying rent if you need to carry on in premises, um, and all of those other things, and, and just managing the flows dealing with the HMRC on the tax side of things if you're in the UK or whatever your tax authority may be if you're not in the UK. And you need to have that kind of a core team in place. You cannot do this type of a growth strategy on your own. So my first recommendation is to go out and get yourself a team if you're going to be looking at doing this. The next thing once you've got that team is you've got to be clear on what your values are. What is, what is your brand and what are your core values and what does, what does your organization stand for? And you know, when the chips are down, what happens? How does, how does your organization act and behave? And that's so important and is so key in setting you apart from your competitors. And then you've got to look at your, kind of your broader culture. And this is often one where I see founders staying very involved because they've kind of set the tone for the culture. And that's things like, you know, how does the phone get answered? And what's the tone of communication when we're exchanging messages with each other or with clients or with suppliers? And, you know, what are the, what are the kind of the day-to-day -day operational values and, and, and culture things that we stand for? And that's really important to get right. And then the final piece is all about your systems and processes. And, and, you know, to scale any kind of a company, you have to have systems and processes that can be replicated and that can simply scale up and grow with the business as it scales without requiring a huge number of people to grow with it as well. You know, as you grow, you will need to have some people, but you don't necessarily need to you know, if you're going to double your size of your business, you don't necessarily need to double the size of your people. But you need to be aware of these things and you must, must, must have that kind of structure in place. So you're looking at your people, at your, your, your brand and your values, at your culture and at your systems and processes. And once you're comfortable that you've kind of got that in place and you know where you want to go, then actually scaling your company doubling it, growing it 5x, 10x, 25x is absolutely achievable. All you need to do is raise funds, acquire other companies, consolidate, put them together, and ultimately, whether it's for you or your investors or others, exit that investment and move on and do whatever comes next. And that's the end of this breakfast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm delighted to be here with Drew. Uh, I'm thrilled because this is actually being broadcast on, uh, on Canada Day, the 1st of July. And I was born in Vancouver, so it's kind of cool. So go Canada. Um, and thank you very much. I'm available for questions. And if you need to reach me, my uh, website address is addthenmultiply.com, A-D-D-T-H-E-N, 
M-U-L-T-I-P-L-Y.com. And I'm sure it'll be in the show notes as well. And all of the other ways to contact me will be in there. Uh, so thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'm sticking around for questions. Bye-bye.